Hey, what's up Summoners? It's the start of a new season and I'm excited to help you guys kick it off with this new video. Riot just gave us a giant sneak peek of what's to come and in case you missed it, don't worry because we'll give you a recap of everything that's going to be happening. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm happy to welcome you guys back to our channel. Now, let's get rolling of what's to come. First up, the most exciting thing that Riot has told us about is something that we already knew about. Well, at least most of us did. Viego, the Ruined King, is confirmed as the champion coming sometime soon. Very soon, actually. He'll hit PBE within weeks to come and will go live later this month. No longer do we ever have to wonder who the Blade of the Ruined King belongs to. The man himself is here. I wouldn't be surprised if the item synergizes with him, and if it doesn't, that's a huge loss opportunity by Riot. Viego is confirmed to be a jungler, by the way, so jungle mains can be definitely hyped to know that they'll be the first one to get love this season. Viego's thematics are based around the Shadow Isles, the dark, mysterious forest that mortals wish to have nothing to do with, the Shadow Isles is a creepy, almost demonic place. They're the bad guys, essentially. From the gameplay we've seen from him, we already know that Viego is definitely evil. In some form, Viego is able to take control of his enemy characters upon takedowns. Before we move forward though, I want you guys to know that we're offering 20% discount on ProGuide's annual subscriptions. If you want to start off the season strong, check out the link in the description down below from the 8th to the 14th. Now, let's get back into the content. That's right, we saw footage of Viego slaying an enemy, then playing as that same enemy for a brief period of time. So I guess one-tricking isn't going to cut it anymore, huh? Well, I guess if you're trying to one-trick Viego at least, you're probably going to have to play some ARAM and get used to every champion. How OP is it going to be? Well, we know that this will be Viego's passive. Man, 2021 is looking like another hectic year of League. Now if you missed that, check out all those trailers because Viego looks sick. The mortal enemies of Senna and Lucian, he fought them head on to get back the soul of his queen from Senna. More on that story building a little bit later though. Really quick, let's just do a quick recap of all the new preseason content that has dropped. We had a giant items overhaul, removing or changing items that didn't really feel satisfying, as well as adding a ton of mythic items. Items that are so OP that you can only build one per game. In case you didn't know, the mechanics behind the shop have received a giant upgrade. They let you know what high elo players are building and also adapt recommended purchases based on the enemy team. So yeah, it's a little bit more reliable now. With the new ranked season starting, it's also very important that we talk about the massive changes to this season. Promotions have been removed, between divisions at least. Thank goodness, this will be my favorite change so far. However, you still have to play them between tiers. In other words, from Silver 3 to 2, you don't have to play one, but from Silver 1 to Gold 4, you do have to play one. This also means that your rank will be more volatile this season. As easy as it'll be to climb into the next division, you can just as easily lose one. At the very least, however, there will still be protection between tiers. And as we all know, protection is never a bad thing. Another change is with everyone starting ranked and provisionals. Like other seasons, yes, we still have to play them and man, that is going to be tedious. However, we'll all start much closer to where we ended up compared to the other seasons. This is especially important for you high elo folks in Masters and Higher. Which, since you guys all watch our channel, I'm pretty sure that's all of you. <laughs> Just kidding. Nothing wrong with not being high elo yet. We're all on that grind and we're going to get there together. Masters Plus is not having any lockouts this early season. That's right, Grandmaster and Challenger are open from the get-go. You can technically hit Challenger on day one, but it's all going to come down to how hard you're willing to grind. While those two elite divisions are always open, as opposed to the previous seasons, there will be minimum LP requirements. But if you're pushing to get ranked from the get-go, nothing is holding you back, so good luck and happy grinding. The final change to ranked is one that I know everybody will love. LP mitigation has been introduced. For games where you have someone leave your game, expect lesser LP losses for players that toughed it out, but more LP loss for the lever. I'm so happy they've introduced this because games where you have a lever or a DC just feel so hopeless. Having them shoulder more of the loss just feels fair to me, and I'm sure everybody can agree to that. Ultimately, the climbing should be a bit smoother for everyone as a result. Now let's move on to the more logistical news. The first thing to talk about is Clash. Fun fact, 28 million people play Clash in 2020, and that's pretty wild, isn't it? Riot has let us know that they're going to be doing work on the free agency for Clash. If you're a 4 stack looking to fill in their final roster spot, or someone who has plenty of friends that play League but for some reason, everybody happens to be busy that day, you know, maybe playing with someone else, or maybe you don't have friends that play League, then that's totally okay. I also got you if you want to play League of Legends with me on Twitch at Nathan underscore ING. Riot is also working on improving free agency, so make sure to keep your eyes open for any changes soon. Some more exciting news about Clash is that Riot plans to be doing testing on the weekdays and not just the weekends. For those of us who work weekends, this is sort of a saving grace. <laughs> but imagine working right now. 
Not everyone is free on weekends, unfortunately. Whether it's work or other obligations keeping us from tasting that sweet victory, there'll hopefully be no more excuses for taking that internet trophy home. That's right, even us old, working folk can all hopefully get a chance to play Clash with our boomer mechanics. However, that's stuff that's to come. The first Clash tourney this season is going to be next weekend. Riot knows that some of us are busy right now, so they've done us a favor by not requiring us to finish placements for the specific Clash. So, even if you haven't had the time to grind out your provisionals, they've got our backs this time around and you'll be able to play with no questions asked. One more thing that we got a very small sneak peek on is that Riot is planning to find new ways for us to show off accomplishments, whether it's champion mastery, an assortment of skins, or just how amazing you are at this video game, Riot wants us to be able to flaunt it. Hopefully it's not Eternals 2.0, because we all know how that went. Again, we don't know much about this yet, but the fact that Wright mentioned this to us has me guessing that we've got big things in store. Hopefully not actually in their store, because I don't want to pay for this. <coughs> Eternals. <coughs> Next, we'll be talking about plans for champions this year. Last year, we got at least one new champion per role. The same is to be expected this year, with Viego covering the jungle role for now. Riot's reasoning behind this is both simple and reasonable. Players shouldn't have to wait more than a year for a new champion to main their respective roles. Where are my fill mains at, who get at least five? The next three champions released are going to be all fitting into the story of Viego and the Shadow Isles. However, will they be his loyal followers, or will they side with Lucian and Senna to stand against them? Where do their values lie? Only time will tell. Nonetheless, we got a little bit of information about these next three champions. First, expect to see another AP fighter. This is a role that we don't see enough of. Sure, we've got Rumble, Swain, Vladimir if you want to count him, and just about anybody else. Which is exactly why this new champion is going to help add more depth to that niche. The next champion is expected to be, and I quote, a gloomy artillery mage. From what we gather, the champion will be a girl and she sounds like she's got a lot of character. I mean, that's what I like to tell myself, personally. She sounds lazy, and one piece of her lore that we do know about is that she is really hated in Battle City and was happy to finally get out. Thus, she'll probably be a Yordle that just didn't quite fit in. Not like the other Yordles, I guess, just built different. Finally, we can expect a potential new Sentinel of Light to join Summoner's Rift. Likely an ally to Lucian and Senna, this champion also marks another big experiment by Riot. Like with having Senna's game-breaking release, this new champion is also going to be a marksman designed for the non-traditional role. We've got Kindred and Graves for the jungle, so this time around, I'm expecting to see another solo laner, or maybe there'll be a support just like Senna. If you weren't aware, Mundo's visual gameplay update is also in the works. You can check these out, but the long story short, he looks like he's gotten some modern touches, and most importantly, he got to keep his cleaver. His update should go live this spring, so he'll get to go where he pleases very soon. This week, a devlog will be released going deeper into Mundo's development, so you can keep an eye out for that. Or we can just make it easier for you, and you can keep an eye out on our channel instead. One thing that we can't help you with, however, is a poll that Riot will be releasing this week in regards to what champion you want to see get an update next. Shivana and Nocturne will return as candidates, but they'll be joined by three more champions, Udyr, Quinn, and Skarner. In the same poll, there will be a dev block expressing why these champions were chosen and what changes we can expect to see for them if they're chosen. Finally, Rammus will be getting a very small rework in the near future. More details are coming very soon. With all of these champions covered, let me ask you guys our question of the day. It's short and simple. Which champion change or release are you most excited for? I haven't said this enough, but my vote goes to Udyr. That man is quite literally pretty wild, but for the new champions, I want to play Viego. Just because I want to keep it fresh and play a little of everyone. This will be a nice change of pace because now I won't be the one getting played. <laughs> Who can relate? Now, let's talk about the skins. I mean, we tell you guys in our patch rundown all the time, the skins are something that we love about this game. Still, some champions haven't gotten as many as they should have, and Riot plans to address this. They've heard all the requests from players whose main character hasn't received a skin in ages. The following champions are confirmed to receive skins in this new year. Fiddle 6, Tom Kench, Galio, Lulu, Nautilus, Wukong, Nunu, Sejuani, Rumble, Twitch, Corky, Yumi, and Camille. Also, three popular champions that will be receiving skins are Caitlyn, Blitzcrank, and Vayne. But even if the champion you wanted a skin for wasn't included on the list, don't lose hope just yet. Riot has stated that they plan to release at least 140 more skins this season. While we're on the topic of skins, let's talk about themes. We've seen amazing skin lines produced, stuff like Project, Star Guardians, and Battle Academia. Essentially, when the hype for a skin line dies or the purchases don't really justify the work done, a skin line gets dropped. However, the good news is that there are some that do well and they'll be revisited, namely the Project and Battle Academia themes we just mentioned. In addition, we have some new lines confirmed. The first is the Lunar Beast skin line. 
These skins feature a new twist on the whole idea of Lunar New Year's, throwing in some spice as it blends in a pinch of cyberpunk. The setting is 2057, the Year of the Ox and Champions are going to be more fashionable, futuristic, and also including touches of traditional elements. Fiora, Jarvin, and Alistar are confirmed to be part of this collection. Second, we got a theme called Space Groove, which will come later this year. We have less information about it, but it seems like a fun theme for sure. It's sci-fi, it's techno, it's silly, and it's colorful. Once again, expect a poll this week, and it, it'll ask three themes that we want to see. Personally, I want to see more Dawnbringer and Nightbringers, but you know, that's just me. First on the list is Monster Tamers, where champions collect strong monsters from Runeterra to fight against each other in high stake matches. So essentially, it's a mix of Pokemon and dogfighting, which is actually just Pokemon. Second is Crime City Nightmare. This takes place in Valorant City, which if you don't know, is where the Star Guardian game mode invasion took place back in 2017. Mysterious, dark, and probably evil individuals sum Cthulhu-inspired magic to an ongoing street war. I really wish it was in Valorant City, because a Phoenix Echo skin would be super dope. Debonair 2.0, and it's going to be a classy gang war. Electors have granted power to rival clubs in an attempt to win them over. Whichever these themes get the most votes will be shipped out. The others might be released later, but that much is uncertain. Finally for skins, as the story building of Runeterra develops, it seems like we'll be getting some Shadow Isles-inspired skins as well. With Viego's introduction, we'll see some new skins not just for him, but for other champions based on what direction Riot decides to take the story. While we don't know much, we can expect to see a new game mode this year. Riot likes modes like Earth and One for All that allows players to live their fantasies. Imagine Lux, but no cooldowns. Imagine five Threshes on the same team. Stuff like that, so expect something creative that allows us to push champions beyond limits we typically know on Summoner's Rift. Another change to events is that event passes are expected to be reworked in the first half of the year. They aren't as satisfying as Riot would hope, so for those of you who ball out and purchase them, you're in luck. And finally, we'll keep this last bit short, as we got news about Wild Rift, the mobile game that's currently in beta. Open beta is expected to be available in the Americas by March, so if you've been waiting for that, we're almost there. We got a Wild Rift channel, so make sure to check that out, and if you're excited and want to play League of Legends on your phone, then that's the place to be. That being said, that will wrap up our 2021 season review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do encourage you guys to check out the description link to join our Discord because we're actually doing a giveaway. With the rank season officially beginning, I hope all of you win your rank games. And even if you don't, you're still a winner in my heart. But let's be real, we all want to win. And if you fortunately match up against me, enjoy the free LP. Again, my name is Nathan Ng. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.